Hello, this is Jer. I'm playing Oxygen Not Included. In the last episode, we generated an oxygen system. In this episode, we're going to turn this really hot magma into power. So, let's get started. First step is to dig out a little area, which I'm going to put uh, Atmo suits in. I'm going to uh, bring heavy watt wires, because obviously we're generating electricity. We want to bring that to our base. And I'm going to bring oxygen pipes down that will connect to the uh, Atmo suits. I'm also going to want to create a vacuum in this uh, area, so I'm building a pump and piping in some water. I'm just making a little dip in the area to separate my carbon dioxide to my vacuum area. Now I'm bringing in Atmo suits, and because the zone before already has uh, gas mass, I'm bringing in gas mass, and you have to be very careful when you're doing this. You don't want your dupes to be trapped in this area of carbon dioxide. So one tip I recommend is have the same number of gas masks down there that you have above. So now that I've got water blocking gases that will go into this area, I can dig out this area, creating a vacuum in the process. So I'm creating two areas. The top area is where the steam turbines are going to be. The bottom area, that's where steam and magma are going to interact to ultimately create power in the system. I've got a liquid reservoir. I want to fill that with a very small amount of water. Let's say between 200 and 300 kilograms. So that's why I've got this little uh, pump shot off to make sure I get just that amount of water going into this system. Now they're starting to dig into this uh, space. I'm going to have them dig down to the magma, but I'm going to give them a little shelf area on the entrance of this thing where there is no magma coming into contact. Reason for that is I want to put a liquid vent that uh, I, I don't want it to be overheated, you know, melt and have uh, issues. So that's why I'm not having magma be come into contact with that area. The rest of the area, I, I could have this fully in contact with the, the hot, hot magma. Once that's dug out, I'm going to build a liquid vent and then I'm going to make that out of steel. Just underneath it, I'm going to create a temperature sensor and I'm going to set that to indicate if it's above, let's say, 600 degrees because I want to make sure this, this area is safe. It doesn't get so hot that, let, that that liquid vent actually melts. That's why I, we've got that shelf. The automation wire I'm making out of steel just to be safe and I'm going to bring in insulate a pipe made out of ceramic. Connecting everything here with power and I'm going to build a liquid shutoff just about the entrance of the steam area. And the whole idea here is if I need power I'm going to get it to put water into that area and that's going to produce steam and eventually heat it up enough to produce power. And if I don't need power that thing's going to shut off and then the pumps or the pipes that come out of the steam turbine are going to be putting the hot liquid into that reservoir until the next time that we're in need of generating power. Just before I complete that, I'm going to dump some water on top of the steam turbines. I want to keep them cool. I'm not going to do this in this episode, but very soon I'll have to bring down some of my cooling pipes to make sure those guys stay cool or, or else we'll run into problems. So now I need to wall off the hot steam area or the future steam area. I'm building a ceramic insulated tile on top. The other one just can be igneous. Just make sure not to make it out of granite tile as it may melt. I'm building an OR gate to the input of the liquid shutoff. And on one side, if the temperature is too hot inside there, it's going to put in water. Or if a smart battery reads that it's under 90% power, it will turn on. So ultimately, if I need power, push water in, or if it's too hot, push water in. So my battery is indicating that it doesn't need any power, which is awesome, except for the fact that I want to demo how this thing works. So I'm going to go off and create a little mini project that's going to consume power. So I may make a separate video on the full details of this, but very quickly, I'm just collecting several wheezy warts, putting them into a really small room, putting a pip in there and getting the pip to plant those side by side so I create a really radiation rich zone. I'm then going to create a red volt generator right in the center of that and get almost a thousand uh, radiation units uh, there. And because that thing consumes a lot of power, that's awesome, it's going to activate the steam turbines. 
for safety, I'm creating doors into this area so it can block dupes as well, the critters, from going in there. There's high radiation. Rad bolts is going to be flying around. I'm also putting a power shut off, so I've got the ability to shut it off when research isn't happening in the future. So now that I'm consuming more power, the battery is going to indicate at nighttime when the solar panels don't work so well that it needs power. So that's going to turn the liquid shut off on, dump some water into this zone. The magma is very quickly going to turn that into steam, heat it up, and the steam turbines are going to start, start operating. And then eventually, that's going to charge the battery back up. The battery is going to indicate that, okay, I've got enough power. Stop sending any more water in there. I don't want it to run forever. I just want the steam to be in there when we're in need of generating power. There's no point of wasting the heat or getting excess heat transfer to deal with. One final note is we do have to cool off those steam turbines. We're going to do that another time in the future. But for now, our system is generating power for us, particularly at nighttime when our solar panels start to turn off. So that is awesome. I'm not sure what the next project is going to be, but whatever it is, I hope to see you there. Jer signing in.